All right. Hello. Uh, my name is Kurt Peart. I'm the director of mobile and digital platforms here at Orange Theory Fitness. Um, that means that I am and my teams are responsible for the development of the new Orange Theory application ecosystem, including our customer-facing uh, mobile applications for iOS and Android, and the associated backend systems that are interconnected to provide our members with access to class schedules, uh, workout performance data, multimedia digital content, and much more. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you today to talk to you a bit about the work our teams did to quickly stand up a global scale multimedia delivery platform. My team members, Pedro Gonzalez, who is our enterprise architect, and William Taylor, our senior Android developer, will review the technical details, the challenges, and the successes uh, we encountered, and uh, also highlight the collaboration we had with the AWS Amplify team, um, where I, whereas I will focus uh, some, more on some of the background strategic decisions that we made, as well as the environment that occurred that took us down this path. All right, so in 2017, uh, the first ser server in AWS was stood up for OTF. A ton of credit here goes to our CTO, Joe Mazzarella, for having the forethought and the, and the vision to commit to a completely cloud-based infrastructure for Orange Theory. Um, he knew that if we were to be able to scale uh, and rapidly innovate, we would have to keep as much of the day-to-day -day maintenance of hardware outside of our teams, so instead we could focus entirely on form and function in regards to features that meet our customers' needs, our businesses' needs, and also our franchisees' needs. In 2018, we started working on our own mobile application that would combine the features and functionality that were currently stitched together by multiple third-party apps. The goal being to create one, um, app landing spot for all OTF members um, to, you know, find studios, um, book classes to get their workout performance data and history, and but really to act as the the primary point of intersection with the brand. Like the new app had to feel like OTF in your pocket and give you everything that you need to interact with the brand. About a year. Uh, after that, of uh, very intense development on front-end and back-end infrastructure, um, reorganizing and consolidating, consolidating data from partners into our own systems and then connecting them efficiently with APIs running on Lambdas so that we could scale um, you know, instantaneously and, uh, and really uh, handling spikes in traffic. Um, and then months of beta testing and refinement, um, we launched the iOS and Android mobile apps with nearly 50 different features in early 2019. From there, we continue to evolve, evolve and add features, including body composition uh, scan results get, getting sent directly to your app, um, deep levels of personal, personalization, uh, uh, digital fitness capabilities, including uh, that digital fitness capabilities that will connect your in-studio experience and data to your out of studio experience and data so you can look across all of your workouts holistically. Um, and then Apple Watch support with the Apple Watch, with the new Apple Watch link. And then again, on top of that, even more features. Um, and even now uh, with COVID, we have 1.5 million users and most of them are utilizing the app consistently each day to engage deeply with OTF. Um, so, in mid-2019, uh, the team did a quick proof of concept to demonstrate multimedia delivery capability to the app. Um, but not just the, the ability to deliver the media, but also to bring a bit of that OTF uh, studio experience, at least from a technology perspective, uh, to users as they engage in these theoretical online workouts. Remember, this is this year last, this time last year, so there were no on, actual online workouts for us. This was all very much theory. Um, that proof of concept that we did was received very well, and then we put it on the shelf 
so that we could finish out the rest of the year's current business priorities. Um, fast forward to February 2020 and COVID hits. And COVID hit, it hit the US, it hit the world, it hit the fitness industry uh, um, particularly hard. Actually, maybe not just particularly hard, but for a more extended period of time than some of the other industries that have been hit. And, um, you know, in one week, we went from being a billion dollar business with a healthy year over year growth. Some would say that our year over year growth was truly all out um, to literally nothing. And uh, at that time, that's when we revisited the, the POC that we did back in, in, in 2019. And realizing that this would really now, there's an opportunity here. There's a crisis, but there's an opportunity in that crisis. So realizing that this would be a way to reach our members where they are with what they have and to keep them engaged in their fitness journey, journey plus to keep them engaged with our theory as a brand, um, you know, we took a look. Problem was it wasn't prime time ready and we needed it to be prime time ready fast. Uh, so we turned to the AWS Amplify team who we had fortunately built a relationship with, a developer relationship with over the last year. Um, to build out the entire system for upload, transcoding, storage, delivery, and viewing of the digital content. Um, so studios closed March 13th. By March 21st, we had, with the help of the Amplify team, launched at home in the app. And since then, we've had over 10 million views of uh, video content, and more than 20% of that being done in the app by members wearing an OTF heart rate monitor, bringing their OTF studio experience uh, to their home, whether that's in their basement, whether that is, you know, in their family room, in their living room, in their master bedroom, they're engaged and it feels like the experience that we, we want to bring to them. And, uh, you know, truthfully, we're just getting started. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to turn it over to my esteemed colleagues to talk to you about the details of what we implemented. My name is Pedro Gonzalez. I'm an enterprise solutions architect with Orange Theory Fitness, responsible for architecture, both infrastructure uh, as well as software. Uh, we're a small team. We play lots of hats. Uh, we wear lots of hats, and uh, you know we all contribute to to the amazing work that uh, our company tries to put forward. So, speaking about what our architecture look like. Um, Prior to, to COVID and prior to the addition that we had to do to deliver at home video, uh, we are really uh, a mostly serverless and managed services uh, type of infrastructure. Our very first server was stood up in AWS in 2017. I wasn't even part of the team back then. None of this, probably 99% of the infrastructure I'm about to tell you about was not in place. We started working very, very hard at that point to bring up this backend that could support both the in-studio applications that run across the world in over, by now, 1,300 studios, as well as a, a, you know, a baby mobile app that was starting to be, to be born at that time. And we knew there was going to be millions of users. So we decided to use serverless as well as managed services from AWS to help us with that. At the bottom of the stack, you know, we, we can call it the bottom or you know, the right-hand side of the stack, we have our data store. We mostly use Aurora uh, RDS MySQL for our transactional data. We have some not some unstructured data that we that we stored in Dynamo, as well as some some business and analytics data that we store in Redshift. We have a very large um, data lake that we store in S3 because we we bring in telemetry from the workouts that happen at the studios. Uh, on the normal circumstances, you know, we would have a thousand studios around the world doing roughly ten classes every day uh, with an average of 20 some to 30 members. So for each of those members, we collect roughly 50,000 data points per class. So you can imagine that we have a lot of telemetry, both heart rate information, as well as uh, fitness equipment information. And that is all driven through 
uh, a, uh, AWS Firehose into our S3 data lake. So as part of the access I mentioned, Firehose, uh, our backend also uses you know, ORMs in both uh, the .NET and Node uh, stacks. We have some custom store procedures that we use uh, for accessing data when it's when it's more efficient. And you know, in some cases, we rely on the AWS SDK for things like access to S3 or you know some of our DevOps operations, etc. Um, Athena is a tool that we use for doing some some data analysis against the the data that is sitting in S3. And we're currently in the process of deploying Snowflake as our uh, data warehouse strategy. Above that, we have our microservices layer, which consists mostly of, of serverless uh, code, uh, ser serverless implementations in Lambda, both .NET as well as Node. We do have, amazingly enough, at this point, we're calling it a uh, uh, legacy code, which is roughly about two years old, but we do have a little bit of code that's running on some servers, some uh, some EC2 instances running full .NET framework, as well as a few containers that are running uh, you know, some node uh, uh, some node code from a very specific set of applications. Uh, we also have some batch processing that needs to happen as part of uh, us moving our data around or communicating with our members, and so we have a set of lambdas that do some of that batch processing. To, to interact with SQS, SNS, and even uh, sending emails uh, out through SES. All of our APIs sit behind API Gateway and are also um, sitting behind uh, CloudFront. So we, we distribute the load and uh, we have some security protection by these services. Uh, API Gateway also allows us for allows uh, for some level of authentication using API tokens and things like that when it comes to system to system uh, communications, and we rely heavily on Cognito for our user authentication. Right, so we use uh, Cognito user pools for our members when they log into the mobile app, as well as for some of our corporate or you know partner or franchise users when it comes to uh, some of our custom in-house applications. And there are several of those. Uh, we have a, a few applications that we developed in-house and are used throughout our studios. Uh, we have uh, a custom developed CRM that we've, that we've built ourselves. We have a couple of applications that I use in the studio for doing things like uh, like fitness challenges. Um, one of the one of the very key points about Orange Theory Fitness is that the same class is being done across the world on on any given day. So if you are in a class in uh, Singapore or you're in a class in let's say Australia or in the Western United States, you're going to be doing the same class. So we're able to do ch uh, fitness challenges across the world and capture hundreds of thousands of results through a custom, uh, custom built uh, web, app, web interface. We also have a Windows uh, native application that is the one that runs the classes in the studios and interacts with the network, the wireless network in the studio that connects to the hardware monitors the members wear, as well as our custom developed tablets. We built design uh, in, and design and built our own custom tablets. And all of this has been has happened in the last couple of years that are paired with the fitness equipment and allow us to capture uh, telemetry through the classes. We have also developed our own custom native mobile application for both Android and iOS. And we have very, very large uh, user base. And we have developed uh, an application for the Apple Watch together with um, a piece of hardware that allows our members to use their Apple Watch to interact with our in-studio network. And they are able to use it as their hardware monitor for our classes. The AWS SDK also plays a part in some of those applications. And we do have some partners that interface with our systems to provide us uh, different types of data that we share either from marketing companies or other types of partners that, that bring us data into our system. Our CI/CD uh, environments uh, rely on both uh, Beanstalk for, for some of the server or container-based deployments. And we also use uh, Azure pipelines for the rest of the CI/CD uh, process. So now, let me let's talk about the Orange Theory at Home project and how 
AWS Amplify helped us deliver this. And all of our studios were suddenly closed. And we had to continue to deliver a Orange Theory branded, Orange Theory um, experience to our members. And there were several ideas being, being bounced around in the office using different products, trying to deliver through you know, some traditional CMS systems. And uh, we, we took, we took a, a view together with our, you know, our partners at AWS. Uh, the AWS Amplify, specifically the video plugin, and how it could, it could help us deliver this experience. So very, very quickly, uh, from, from my perspective, delivering the backend infrastructure to, to, took a matter of maybe an hour to set up the entire infrastructure for a development environment. But it was very easy from there to move it across our environments. So as you can see here, what the video plugin allowed us to do was set up an infrastructure that consisted of an input bucket where our video producers from, from the marketing team were able to to uh, to send their video. So when that video landed on that bucket, the a Lambda function would be triggered, which would then uh, trigger a media convert job. And this media convert job would transcode the, the source video into uh, HLS format, uh, which is a really, really good um, format for variable bit rates for different types of uh, it's different types of devices and network conditions, and it delivers the best experience to, to the viewers by allowing the client to adjust to the real-time conditions. And of course, we published this, this video behind, behind CloudFront. So as you can see, that, that yellow section there, it's what uh, the Amplify uh, video plugin deployed for us. We also added a few, uh, we made a few uh, additions where you know, we, we created an SNS uh, topic with some subscriptions to uh, notify our marketing team whenever a video was completed and then they could they were able to add the metadata into our CMS contentful which would make it available to our mobile app like I said this the infrastructure was very very easy to deploy uh, the majority of the work that was done and some of the some of the 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 really amazing work was done by our mobile team and William will discuss some of that uh, coming up. So here is a really, really uh, small example of, of what it took. You know, this is an actual screenshot from, from my, uh, my laptop where I deployed the, the Amplify, Amplify video plugin and basically created the environment and and it, it generates a CloudFormation template behind the scenes that I pushed into the environment and it was all done. This is uh, the Amplify uh, framework is, and specifically the video plugin is an open source project. And I work very closely with the team to address several issues that came up during my, uh, during my implementation. None of them major, but uh, I felt the, the the collaboration with the team was was second to none. They were very excited to to work with us, and they were they were really really uh, thankful for the for some of the feedback for the feedback that we provided. Uh, minor issue that we found was that the platform distribution was not really set up with SSL, so we were quickly able to address that by manually adding SSL to to the distribution. The video transcoding was uh, by default not using acceleration. Uh, in this case, we actually provided um, a pull request into the open source project. They accepted, and it was it was fixed as part of one of their releases. We also wanted the ability to group the videos into subfolders. Uh, for those of you familiar with HLS, um, whenever you you transcode a, a video file, a large number of files is actually generated. You know, the the, the video itself it's split into roughly three second chunks for different types of uh, of resolution. So you can imagine there's quite a bit of video and you know we actually generate uh, one workout video every single day. So again, we added, uh, we created a pull request into the open source uh, project and it was accepted and it was, it was released. Uh, we also wanted the ability to receive a notification whenever the, the transcode job was done. And we did this manually for now, um, but provided the feedback to the team. Uh, we also wanted the ability to transcode uh, different types of videos using the different transcoding cues. So, for example, we wanted any any audio format 
uh, formatted video, sorry, any audio formatted file to be to have its own transcoding queue. And again, we were able to submit a pull request for that, and, and it was fairly quickly added to one of the releases. The team is also working uh, on creating a set of more advanced configuration settings that can address some of some of the uh, some of the points that that we brought up, as well as uh, some ideas that they've had, allowing users that you know need a little bit more flexibility or they need a little bit more advanced uh, configuration to basically uh, have a mechanism for doing so. And I'd like to now, uh, you know, uh, give give the floor to our teammate uh, William. Thanks, Pedro. So today I'm going to discuss consuming Amplify generated video streaming content in a mobile application. First off, we need to discuss HTTP live streaming or HLS, which is an adapted bitrate protocol. Why would we choose HLS for video streaming? Because HLS allows a media player to have multiple choices of video resolutions for different screen sizes and internet connection speeds. What does this mean for the end user? It means that the end user will see the best possible video quality based on their device specs like screen resolution and internet connection speeds at the time. For example, they may be on a cell connection which may be slower than a Wi-Fi connection. From the diagram, you can see that HLS is not simply made up of one single monolithic file, but instead a hierarchy of files. There's a master playlist, media playlist. Notice the different types of, of files in the media playlist, such as cellular, Wi-Fi, Apple TV, and media segments, which are chunks of video content. Why is this useful? Well, a prime example could be that you are doing an at-home workout outside and are connected to your cell network. You come inside for the cool-down portion and connect to Wi-Fi. Your media player will switch to Wi-Fi video and play the next corresponding video chunk moving forward. The next thing I want to talk about is what Amplify did as far as recommending uh, configurations for the media conversion process. So AWS Elemental Media Convert does the batch pre-processing of input media to HLS format and stores it to S3. The Amplify team's recommended configs were provided with tons of R&D to take the guesswork out of getting the best quality HLS output. The finely tuned and tested Amplify team recommended configs allowed Orange Theory to stand up the Amplify streaming platform without the need to do extensive end-to-end -end quality testing, saving valuable time to market and ensure ensuring uh, excellent quality. So another reason, next thing I want to talk about is, is HLS and how it's widely supported. From the mobile developer perspective, we don't necessarily need to know the fine details about the server-side architecture. However, it's nice to understand some of the basics to know that data passed down to the mobile app is served from a reliable platform. With the Amplify Video AWS platform, we are assured of maximum uptime and scalability knowing that the files are served via time-tested S3 storage and Amazon CloudFront acting as a CDN with geographic distribution as a front end. As a mobile developer, we can be limited at times with available choices for app view controls, such as media players, and we tend to gravitate to the best and most current controls. When we have to work with newer protocols, we tend to approach with caution. The good news with HLS is it works with most current media players. Consuming HLS in our Android and iOS app was as easy as passing a download link to the media players for mobile player like Android and Apple native AV player out of the box. The process of creating the UI and flow for Orange Theory at home experience took about three weeks. However, modifying the code to consume the HLS URL was as simple as swapping the URL derived from our backend content management system. And you can see on here, there's a variable called AWS HLS URL and that 
used to be another media source and we simply provided the link to the S3 storage file into our media player and it played it with, with no effort or modifications required. So what is the result of all this? We get, we get high quality, low latency video integrated with real time heart rate monitor metrics. So what you're seeing, here's, an at, here's what at home looks like to the end user with the HLS video serve from the AWS Amplified platform. Orange Theory is able to seamlessly integrate streaming video content with wearable metrics such as heart rate, calories burn, Orange Theory proprietary splat points, and video play and total video time. So that wraps up my discussion about Amplify and integrating with our mobile applications. Now I'm going to send it back to Kirk to give a roadmap of what's coming. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro and William. Um, I have to say that I feel incredibly fortunate to be working with such sharp, dedicated, and hardworking individuals. And they are, guys, just the tip of the spear. But of course, that's the OTF way, mostly up at a push pace, occasionally at an all out. And then we know that the sum total of our input uh, delivers a continuously improved experience for our members, for our franchisees, and for our business through our technology endeavors. So what we've shared with you here today is just some of what we've done thus far. And as you see, AWS is a big part of our infrastructure and uh, with greater use on the horizon of the Amplify framework as we move more forward into digital services. So expect to see innovation around the at-home workouts. Um, we're going to continue to deliver those workouts regularly and you'll see the product evolve. The content will, will change and the delivery mechanisms will maybe change and evolve a bit and as well as the format. Um, deeper integration with data driving experiences that are personalized across all platforms and expect to see more platforms. Uh, use of AppSync, Chime, and Amplify to bring cool new OTF experiences to life and even uh, to bring some to life in real time and so much more. So from, uh, from Pedro, from William, myself, and the entire Orange Theory technology team, we thank you for your time and attention.